Several days ago, the Washington Post decided to allow Taylor Lorenz to continue to be employed. But that's just the start of this tragic story. Hi, I'm Stu here for the Tears for Taylor Foundation. After Taylor Lorenz went on television sobbing about small pieces of information about her becoming public and how it was ruining her life, she then used one of the nation's most prominent newspapers to dox a private individual in an attempt to ruin her life. At no point did self-awareness kick in and remind her that she would look like an absolute idiot if she did these things. That's because Taylor Lorenz suffers from self-awareness deficiency syndrome, or SADS. She's sad. Luckily, the Tears for Taylor Foundation and viewers and listeners like you sprang into action and raised several trillion dollars to help as we worked toward our mission, raising awareness for self-awareness. Recently, podcaster Tim Poole decided to buy a billboard in Times Square about this back and forth, and here's what it looked like. It said, at Timcast, Hey, Wapo! Democracy dies in darkness? That's why we're shining a light on you. Mm-hmm, yeah. Taylor Lorenz docks libs of TikTok. Uh-huh, they sure did. And that's how the billboard ended. Of course, Despite the fourth letter of her first name and the first letter of her last, Taylor Lorenz is incapable of just taking the L. So she decided to respond, quote, This billboard is undeniably so idiotic. It is hilarious. But don't forget that these campaigns have a much darker and more violent side. I'm grateful to be at a newsroom that recognizes these bad faith, politically motivated attacks and has a strong security team. Well, you know what, Taylor? Guess who doesn't have a strong security team? The person you doxed in the pages of the Washington Post. That's who. <laughs> in fact, she's in hiding because of you. <laughs> and you're just going on television over and over and over again, not in hiding at all. You're tweeting 442,000 times a day. You might say she should just stop talking and typing and save herself the embarrassment. But here's the thing. Taylor can't do that. She doesn't even know she's embarrassing herself. That's because despite raising several trillion dollars, we were unable to make her self-aware in any way, she's still completely in the dark about her own behavior. Imagine being Taylor. Luckily, you have stepped up again, and I'm proud to announce we have raised 42 quadrillion, 891 trillion, 264 billion, 311 million, 424,703 dollars, and thank you for that last $3, Bob in Idaho. This is really an incredible effort and should buy more self-awareness than any person could ever use. Unfortunately, $42 quadrillion in change, well, that's just not gonna do the job. Not even close. You need to step up and do more. At this point, Taylor hasn't even begun to grasp that she's annoying yet. She's certainly not self-aware and may even continue to believe she's likable. Hmm. Help us raise awareness for self-awareness. At the Tears for Taylor Foundation, we just need a little more of your money. And then everything should be fine. You know, a few quintillion dollars should do it. Thank you for your support. PlaceTV.com slash stew is the place to go to get a Blaze TV subscription. You can save 10 bucks and get, uh, if you get the subscription to Blaze TV, why not do that? Use the promo code stew. Glenn Beck is here to draft me into the gender wars. TikTok's damage to our kids is getting more and more apparent. But we start by doing China's COVID collapse. You may have heard 
that China is going through a little bit of something right now. In fact, China, of course, started this whole thing. I don't know if you knew that. Chinese government, really responsible for the global pandemic. Thank you so much for that. Uh, whether it was a lab leak or natural, they screwed us up over and over and over again and continue to withhold data that would be important to help solve the problem. Thank you, China. Anyway, so they locked everybody down and they were welding people in their apartments and all that. And that was in 2020. And that's back when that seemed totally rational, right? Remember that? Oh, look at those people. They're, they're welded into their apartments. China's crazy. and <laughs> We would never do that. So we went through 2020. And 2021, and we get into 2022, and China is the only nation, I think, on Earth still going after this zero COVID myth, this idea that you can keep COVID at zero if you just are disciplined enough and spray enough people with substances. Let me give you a little picture of where they are now. Uh, in, in This is from Shanghai over the past couple of weeks. They've decided to put the city of Shanghai, one of their financial and, and uh, uh, economic capitals, uh, into uh, complete and total lockdown. Here are some pictures from Shanghai. Uh, here, right now, they're testing everybody outside as they shuffle through in the rain to get tested over and over and over and over and over again. You have um, everybody getting sprayed. Let's see another video. Here we go. Someone uh, walks in. Okay. Here they go. And what happens? They get sprayed in the face with some sort of substance, which I'm sure is water. But uh, that would be honestly the best outcome of this. Just spraying everybody down because I don't know if you know this. COVID is killed by water. I, I don't know if that's actually true, but there you go. Uh, you also have uh, barriers being put up all over Shanghai. And the people are not happy about them, as you see here. Uh, residents are tearing down some of the borders so they can, you know, escape and go live some form of life, which is not much of a life, honestly, uh, as, as far as that goes. Uh, how about uh, there's a, a couple of apartment complexes that are in full revolt over this and they're saying, hey, you know what? We're not going to get your we're not going to even get tested every day. Uh, we're, we're done with this. This is crazy. Let me show you some footage from there in Shanghai. As you see, people standing in in the hallway and filming out their door and just seeing people walking through the hallways constantly spraying God knows what all over the hallways of these apartment buildings and now right at them as uh, they spray whatever supposedly COVID killing uh, ingredient that was. Uh, then you have old people walking through the streets trying to get by people in hazmat suits. And this is fun just because this lady's just not putting up with it. She's just walking right through the broom. He's trying to hold her back with a broom and she's just like, nah, screw you. I went through Mao, get out of my way. <laughs> She's just pointing and yelling at them. Again, they're all wearing masks and hazmat suits outside, which, as I might point out, as the New York Times has pointed out, there are no documented cases of COVID passing outdoors in the history of the entire pandemic, with the exception of close conversation. So if you just keep your mouth shut and don't talk to each other, everything should be fine outside. All of this is to say... That China, which of course is a major hub of economic activity across the world, is sort of crucial to not only what goes on in China, but also what goes on in the rest of the world. Exhibit one, COVID-19. Exhibit two, the economy. And what happens when a city like Shanghai shuts down? We have a massive, massive backlog of ships and shipping containers and uh, all sorts of things. Honestly, the entire economy shut down. People can't even they have to do all sorts of ridiculous testing just to go out to the restaurants so they can deliver the food to the people who are locked in their apartments. This is not a fun life right now. But let me just give you a little bit of a picture. This is a, a, a live picture as of today of what the port of Shanghai looks like. And to describe it to you, if you happen to be listening to podcasts, what you see, it looks like almost like an ant trail. There are so many ships trying to figure out and so many uh, ships that are backlogged in the, uh, the, the bay there and into the river, into the port, where it's almost like, I mean, in the river, it's there, they can't fit another ship in there. Like you put one more ship in there and they just start overflowing onto land. That is where we are right now. It's incredible. Thousands and thousands of ships trying to get out of there over and over and over again. How about the ships waiting to load or discharge at Shanghai? Now, what you see here is a fancy graph, and that's what we do here on the program. We show you lots of graphs. Conservators, 
unite. It's Chartapalooza. Okay, what you're seeing on this graph, and I, I know I've seen this graph before. This is a graph where you see the red line, uh, which is representing 2022. And we're talking about ships waiting to load or discharge at Shanghai. Shoots straight up. I mean, two or three times any other previous level, including previous times during the pandemic. Shoots straight. Oh, I know where I've seen this graph before. My 2020 wait. That's where I see. Yep, right there. Yeah, it just shoots straight up. And maybe never comes back down. Yeah, it's a little bit of a problem. In fact, uh, the uh, shipping, shipment volume is way down as well. We also have this graph for you because we like showing you graphs. That's what we do here. Uh, when the partial Shanghai, uh, lockdown in Shanghai begins, we drop from, you know, flat, normal percentage, minus 10, minus 20, minus 30 percent, and is hung out around between minus 20 and minus 30 percent ever since and continues on that path. This is the type of thing that creates a little bit of a problem around the world. People can't get their goods. People can't get the goods that they've ordered. People can't get the car that they ordered uh, eight months ago. There's lots of problems that are nonspecific and not at all related to me in any way. The point here, though, is that uh, you really do need uh, a global uh, shipping, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a global trade that's workable, I guess is the right way to put this. Shipping is a part of it, but it's not the only thing. And just because China has decided to implement a completely ridiculous strategy that can't possibly work, uh, they are now costing not just uh, themselves, but us tons and tons of pain. Now, this is just one of the things we're facing right now. Of course, the Russia and Ukraine conflict is also a big part of this. We're seeing all sorts of problems as it relates to food. We've had the president of the United States saying food shortages are coming. And I don't know if you noticed this clip, because it has not really made the rounds that much. But this is a senator, a U.S. senator, Roger Marshall, talking on CNBC to, Mar or, I guess she used to be on CNBC. What is she on now, Fox Business? Maria Bartuomo. Uh, talking about, hey, um... How about global famine? Did you just say that you are expecting a famine in Europe in the next two years? Oh, this will be a worldwide famine. Uh, well, I think it'll be even worse next year than this year. So if 12, 15 percent of the wheat uh, comes from Ukraine that's exported and they're having problems getting fertilizer, they're having problems getting tractors in the field, all the diesel fuel is going towards uh, their, their, their war efforts, right? So if all that's clogged, all the, the USAID that we spend, all those types of things, there'll be a famine across the world. Oh, just a famine across the world. No big deal. Now, I have a little more optimism, maybe, than the senator. I think we're going to talk to him on radio this week about this comment and try to suss out exactly, you know, what's going on here. Uh, but, yeah, you know, can we suck it up? We're America, right? Can we suck it up and pay a few, you know, percent more for some goods? Can we wait a little longer? I don't know, something like eight months for a car that you ordered. I guess we could. It doesn't feel like it right at this moment, but I guess we could. It's possible we can swallow some of this. There's a lot of people right on the line who won't be able to swallow it here in the United States. But even those people are in a much better place than many around the world. People who really are on the verge of poverty or hunger on a daily basis. Is that food going to get to them? We could be seeing massive, massive pockets of real poverty and real starvation in the near future. I hope this doesn't happen. The market usually does have a way of solving these problems, and I have a heck of a lot of faith in it, probably more than most people. But when you have all these external factors going on that are outside of the market, disconnected to it completely, it becomes much, 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 much more difficult. Look, the truth is, it's not that the Chinese lockdown is a problem we can't handle, uh, or inflation, you know, I mean, or supply chain disruptions, or the war in Ukraine or the border, or the collapse of the Japanese economy, which seems to be going on right now, or the fact that we have an incoherent invalid as a president. It's not that any of those things individually are too difficult to take for the United States of America. It's that all of them are happening at the same freaking time, and a hundred other things, too. That's the problem. We are only capable of dealing with a certain number of catastrophes at one given time. And I feel like we're bumping up against the limit. At least our education system, though, isn't targeting our kids. Oh, crap. We have the latest on that debacle coming up with Glenn Beck next. Does 
Mother's Day is two weeks away, and our dear friends at GenuCell have the perfect gift for all those special women in our lives. Right now, you can save up to 50% on all GenuCell products across GenuCell.com, including their brand new Ultra Retinol Cream. Uh, during this limited time uh, for the Mother's Day sale, every order includes GenuCell's immediate effects for results in as little as 12 hours absolutely free. My mom loves GenuCell products. Uh, also, the mom of my children loves GenuCell products. They can make you look uh, younger. They can make you look better. It's the best in skincare, you know? And it's a fantastic gift for that mom in your life. And by the way, if you don't love the results, your money back. Make this Mother's Day one that she will always remember and give her the kind gift of beauty. GenuCell.com slash do. Go there now for the 50% off world-class skincare. Uh, skincare. It's GenuCell.com, G-E-N-U-C-E-L.com slash do. All orders are automatically upgraded to free two-day shipping with concierge, white glove service. Don't miss it. GenuCell.com slash do. GenuCell.com slash stew. I'm joined once again by everyone's favorite, huggable, lovable, great, great grandfather, Wait, Glenn Beck. What? Uh, he's newest special is coming up here at 9 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> Be sure to stay tuned. Tonight, it's the Dark Money Network funding the war on gender. Glenn, thanks for coming on the program. Yeah. Great. I mean, like, wonderful. A wonderful mm -hmm. grand grandfather. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we have this special coming up tonight. Yeah. And you kind of take it back to 2015 yeah. was the Supreme Court uh, has a, even if you agree with uh, the actual ruling in the Supreme Court, a very bizarrely uh, justified ruling uh, to grant the right for great gay marriage. Even if you mm -hmm. totally agree with it, the legal aspect of that is a whole other question. Mm -hmm. But this launches a whole new a whole new thing uh, onto um, because society. Because of a couple of reasons. Um, you know, the slippery slope thing, mm -hmm. they had to be very careful. You can't induce everything because that's got to be about love. You don't have a right to tell me who to marry. It's about love. Right. Okay. Very specific. So, and love wins. So how dare mm -hmm. you say we would start to normalize any of these things? Pedophilia. How dare you say that? Mm -hmm. As soon as that court case was won, well, there's a couple of things that happen. Now the slippery slope can be unveiled because too late. Um, the other thing is, is she you've got a big business here. You have a giant business with lots of money. Mm -hmm. You just accomplished that thing. Meaning like the people who, the activists who are fighting yeah. for this? Yeah. What are you going to do? <laughs> they don't you're, just you're shut just gonna down sh when We're going to shut down right? all these organizations? Yeah. Yeah. Of course not. Mm. Um, and there is a big change. And we have some, we have some stories. The, the connections, and yes, George Soros is involved, but plays a more minor role in this one. The connections to just three people in America that have funded almost every court case on this since like 2009. Mm. Um, the gay bakers, everything, everything is coming from about three people who are dedicated and have millions of dollars. Mm. Okay, um, it, this is not a this is not a grassroots thing. This is. A few guys who have a very extreme agenda, and they'll fund it no matter what the cost. It really is amazing. I feel like the last couple of years in particular have been the revenge of the slippery slope. We started doing the show, you know, a million years ago on radio, and it was always like when you'd bring something up and you'd say, if this happens, it'll lead to this. And people are like, oh, you're just making a slippery slope argument. Uh, that was a way to, All of it. to get rid of it. Now, like, the slippery slope seems to be proving itself right over and over and over We're again. We're down looking up yeah. at the slippery slope. <laughs> we're already down. And anybody who says, ah, slippery slope, yeah, I know, because we're down at the bottom now. Yeah. You'd have to climb that hill <laughs> to have it become slippery again so you could slide down it. Yeah. Everything, I mean, these, because it's not honest, because it's about money and power, the slippery slope works. We were having conversations and we were saying, no, no, it, it, you don't understand. You do this, this will happen. Oh, come on. This is about love. Love wins. And so you could have that argument of the slippery slope, but when 
they cut that off at the pass on this is just about this issue. Right. This is just about love. That became the real issue, and nobody was listening to the rest of it. It's, and this is essentially progressivism in a nutshell, in right? In a nutshell. You don't go for the whole thing on day no, one. You go a little piece at a time. Yeah. And, and that's what we're seeing in our entire society. And now, I mean, we are truly looking at the destruction of gender. The goal is by 2050 that there will be no gender. Now, think of that, Stu. That's impossible scientifically. Right. It doesn't get actually removed. Right. There still is gender. You know, I was uh, I was looking at the Malthusian movement, mm -hmm. working on something, and um, so I'm I'm reading all about the Malthusian thing and how this became uh, the movement here in the progressive era. Then it became the Nazi eugenics, and then it turned into the you know population bomb mm -hmm. stuff. Um, and as you're looking at that. The, the Germans insisted that they weren't racist. Yeah. They were scientific. Mm -hmm. They were not racist. They're scientific. And that's what's happening on all of these things. They're, they're categorizing people as groups, and then they're, they're taking science apart and taking science um, and mixing it with fantasy... Um, and and uh, the rejection of empirical truth. Yeah, that's what's interesting is because it's it see this new this new dependence on science, which has been around for a long time. I mean, you know, there's always been this appeal to science and certainty. You've written about it going back to the progressive era, the early mm -hmm. progressive era. This is always the justification. It's what brought us out of the dark ages. In in some ways, yeah, it is the empirical evidence. The rejection of nonsense, I believe it because you tell me your God says that it exists. And it brought us out of the dark ages. And then it became stronger and stronger. We started to reject God. We made God our scientists, or, I mean, our uh, science, science our God. God. Yeah. And in the progressive era, that's where it turns nasty. Yeah. See, it seems like if you go back and look at like, some of the early people in the eugenics era, the, the early 20th century mm -hmm. progressivism that spread to Europe, as we've talked about, you get the sense looking at some of this in that these people obviously had a much different understanding about race generally than we do today. And I think we've made a lot of progress in a good way on, on that. At least I thought we did until recently. Yeah, no, I think the average person did, but yeah. I don't think the movement slowed down at all. No, I don't think so either. But I had a sense that at least back in the day, there was this belief that they were right on the science. And yes. we later on realized, let's just, I mean, gener broadly generalizing here, but like we later on realized, okay, that was a really dumb thing. That, the, the eugenics thing was totally wrong. They were pursuing it because they believed they were right. So was, I don't get that sense today. I don't get the sense today that they something think new. there's no gender. Are, you know, were they wrong because they failed? in their scientific attempt, because now we have all this technology that can help us do pretty much anything. Mm -hmm. And so does that make us right? I mean, look at what we're, look at what we're messing with now. Yeah. We're, and, and the reason why 2050 is that goal of, of you know, no binary uh, choices anymore is because of our technology. And they're erasing they're erasing the human uh, factor. They're erasing the family factor. We're erasing how babies are supposed to be made. We'll just grow them. We'll tech evolve them and grow the ones that we want. I mean, it is, I think that was wrong when we were trying to do it with the Nazis and they were doing it with, you know, like milk duds and ink, <laughs> you know, and they're like, I think we pour these things together and it'll be great. We're going to put them in their eyes. Right. Right. Yeah. Now we can do them. Yeah. And I think there is a, um, a, a lot of people that are just like, oh, no, if we can do it. It's fine. It seems to me the more modern version of this argument is more reliant on the tactic than what they actually than the actual belief where they believed they were in the right. Hitler, the, the worst guy in the history of the world, but believed that white Aryan culture was the, the answer to purity or whatever the hell he was talking about. 
it, now it's like they don't even they're, they don't even believe these things. Like I, I can't I can't believe they actually think there are no genders. They they don't believe there's a hundred. This is all propaganda. They're making it up as they go along. Every two days, there's a whole new rule. I think they do believe. Uh, this is why I'm starting with Malthusian yeah. theory. Um, I think they do believe that um, humans are bad and destructive, and there's too many of us. Mm. And so anything that works towards that end is good. I mean, look at how fast Japan, all of a sudden, the men were not interested in sex. I know a lot of men. Yeah, they, I am they, a man. They typically are. Typically, mm -hmm. you're interested in sex, <laughs> yeah. you know, to the point to where they started dressing all of the girls up like, I don't know, Catholic school girls. And you're like, <laughs> what are you doing? This? I mean, what's happening here? Mm -hmm. No sex drive. I think that works to a lot of people's advantage. They control you. They control the population. They protect the earth. We don't have to worry about all these resources, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. I mean, I think there is a, it's a death cult. Is there a possibility that this, the, how fast this is going, how slippery the slope has become, is going to help put a stop to it? To, to give you a quick example, I was at a baseball game uh, recently, and they had one of these announcements that comes up pre-game, and they're like, do not throw things at the field. Do not, you know, I don't know, mm -hmm. fire your weapons at the players when you're <laughs> pissed off at them, or whatever the In last Texas, day. you have to you say, have that. To say yeah. that. And they went through this thing, and do not, uh, you, you know, anyone who's using abusive language will be removed. That includes uh, things based on gender and sex. And they said, uh, they said um, and sexual preference. And I thought to myself, like, that's already offensive to the left. Like, this is a left-wing, don't say bad racist things, don't say uh, sexist things. If there's a gay player, don't say bad things about them because they're gay. A an attempt to appease this. I mean, of course, there's no one uh, doing these things largely. And why would you have but, to announce that? But, like, you know, it's just that dumb pre-game disclaimer. Yeah. But the, the pre-game disclaimer is already outdated. Like, sexual preference, what do you mean? They prefer it? It's We're, we're not allowed to admit that anymore. Yeah. Now it's this, like, central thing that is, like, unchangeable until you change it, you know, right. it really none of this stuff makes sense. And I feel like it's so jarring to the average everyday person that this is their path to losing all this, quote unquote, progress they believe they've made. I think the death knell to this is the schools. Yeah. You know, I don't think people, most people are just, you know, we're Whatever. busy. Just leave me alone. I just <laughs> let me do what you, you know. Do. I mean, look at what we did just to go to Home Depot. Mm -hmm. OK, I'll stay in the house. Just let me go to Home Depot and mm -hmm. I'm fine. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, so that's the way I think most Americans are. When you start coming for our kids. Now that's different. I mean, Tanya and I just had a discussion last night. I'm, I am not paying for my children's. Uh, college in, uh, unless they go to Hillsdale, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, uh, you know, my daughter wants to be an actress. And I looked at my wife and I said, where exactly am I sending her with our money? And she's going to come back and go, dad, mom, I still have these values. I love you guys so much. What, where am I going to send her? That location does not exist. It does you not exist. The here. arts <laughs> yeah, does no. not exist. Does not exist. Yeah. And So what do you know, do? I don't know yet. I mean, honestly, I called somebody um, yesterday who you know, who's you know, world-famous actress, and I said, what do I do? She said, you cannot send her to any school if you, unless you, know, you don't care. And I said, no, I do. She said, well, then... You should probably, you know, call, um, what's his name, David Mamet, hmm. uh, and say, hey, I want to start an acting school, you know. For not, I'll pay for, for same people. Yeah, I'll pay, uh, you know, I'll pay five people to come and just teach acting and hope that other people <laughs> will come and want to be a part of it. And I'm like, I don't want to run a school. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but that's where we're yeah. at. That's where we're at. We are at that point where we have to just start our own things, and everyone hates that answer, but it does, you, it does you, result in a lot of good things when, when it happens. People have to understand, we are truly at war. We are at war with people who will spend every last dime to wipe out the things that you have always believed to be true, mm. that people are good that people are um, able to choose their own way in life. 
leave people alone. Men cannot have babies, okay? Because you say you can have babies, because a surgeon can implant a baby somehow or another in you, doesn't mean men can have babies, okay? We, have to, we are at war with people who want us to deny things we know are true. And if they win, everything we know and love is gone. People have to start, stop thinking, oh, this is such a bad thing, to you are at war. You are at war with an ideology that wants to wipe your thoughts, your passions, your beliefs out of the earth. Mm. Well, after your interviews, we normally have to go back and edit the, all the things that you say that aren't allowed on YouTube out. Yeah. And so people just heard like four pronouns yeah, uh, throughout great. that entire it's interview. Uh, it's going to be the same case, I think, tonight. Yeah. Glenn Beck, the special is the Dark Money Network funding the war on gender. It's coming up at 9 p.m. Eastern. Don't go anywhere. Make sure to go to blazetv.com slash stew. Enter the promo code stew because that's how they know you like this stupid show. Plus, you'll save the 10 bucks on your subscription. Glenn, thank you for coming on. Thank you. If you're going to single out the moment that Twitter sort of showed their hand as you know, the sort of ridiculous uh, censorship that we've talked about over uh, the years when it comes to conservatives, what would you point to? I think a lot of people would point to Donald Trump uh, being kicked off, which is really uh, inexcusable. I mean, any world leader, I don't care. If, I mean, si sincerely, a horrible dictator in some foreign country, uh, if they want to be on Twitter, let them be on Twitter. Uh, a lot of times we say, like, oh, I can't believe this person from Iran is on Twitter. I want these people on Twitter. Let us record what they say. I want to know exactly what they've done. I think creating a, an ongoing record of the things that they say is probably a good thing. Certainly, if you're a Democrat, you can't possibly argue that kicking Donald Trump off Twitter has helped you. It has not helped you at all. If anything, it's helped Donald Trump immensely. Uh, but... I think the other one everyone would point to would be the Hunter Biden laptop story. Now, of course, if you go to HunterBidenLaptopCase.com, you will be the bestest person to talk about the Hunter Biden laptop. But if you don't happen to have the HunterBidenLaptopCase.com, let me explain that story to you briefly. The nation's oldest freaking newspaper, the New York Post, decided to, post, uh, to uh, put this story up there with all sorts of details that, you know, people argued whether the origin story of this material was accurate at the time. I think since then it's proved to be accurate. But it was just the most egregious example, right? Like a week before the election, they're uh, banning accounts of news. These aren't like, this isn't like, you know, some random conservative saying crazy things. This is a newspaper, a well-known newspaper that's been around forever uh, with a story that they're not going to just make up. Everybody knew it had uh, relevance and had uh, some sort of basis. In fact, we didn't know the whole origin story at the time. We know more about it now. Well, Elon Musk was, uh, was asked about this, uh, and he's going to be taking over Twitter in case you have not heard that. He said suspending the Twitter account of a major news organization for publishing, publishing a truthful story was obviously incredibly inappropriate. Uh, yeah, I would say that's, that's probably true. It's interesting. The left, though, is freaking out that he said that. And this is what they do kind of all the time. In fact, there's a video of a top lawyer at Twitter breaking down and crying during a meeting about Elon Musk's takeover. First of all, look, relax. You know, relax. Everybody relax here. Elon Musk has not done anything wrong yet. Uh, maybe he will at some point. And what's the worst thing he can do? Ruin Twitter? It's like saying, you know, what's he going to do? Ruin Soviet communism? I mean, it's already a crap heap. What's he, he can't possibly make it worse. Uh, so I don't know why that's a big deal. I guess maybe he could make it a little bit worse. Because right now, people keep complaining about Elon Musk and what he may or may not do to Twitter. Instead of focusing on, I don't know, the Chinese government and their control, according to tons of insiders, of TikTok uh, the world's fastest growing social network in history. Uh, this headline is a bit disturbing. How TikTok Live became a strip club filled with 15-year-olds. Yeah, let's worry about Elon Musk, though. Let's worry about Elon and what he's doing. I would read you some of the story, but it's so incredibly disturbing that I'm not going to do that. Um, and I will say, 
they have quotes from people. They apparently watched a bunch of videos that they probably shouldn't have watched, uh, but I'm glad they reported this. So you know, I'm not your uh, I'm not your kid's parent. You are okay. If your kid's on TikTok, uh, burn 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 your house to the ground, and then you could just say, "Sorry, hon, your phone was inside." It's just one way to get rid of their TikTok uh, obsession. If they are on a TikTok, maybe um, salt the earth wherever their phone goes and hope that they never go on it again because it is, I mean, besides the fact that it's really annoying, it's also just basically poison. Uh, and apparently uh, sexually, uh, sexually uh, exploiting 15-year-olds for older men. So that's a wonderful, wonderful thing in our society. Uh, now, if you think TikTok is bad for uh, having... 15-year-olds uh, in a strip club, you may want to sh hide your eyes here and close your ears as I tell you about Joe Biden's approval rating. Not good. Really ugly. Uh, really disturbing. Uh, in most states, uh, Biden is underwater. His net approval rating fell by 38 points among independents in Michigan, 33-point declines in Georgia and Minnesota. More than half of Democratic voters strongly approve of Biden's performance in one state. Just one, Wyoming, compared to 47 states in the first quarter of 2021. When you look at voters in purple states, you see every one of these graphs. I could show them to you, but uh, there's too many of them. But basically, they all look like X's. Okay, X's. One line, the red one, disapproval going up from left to right, and approval, the blue line, going down from left to right. Um, really, really bad. If you want to look at independence, it is really awful. Uh, here we go. Independence. Let me just give you some a, a little quick sampling from some purplish states. Uh, Arizona, 33 percent approval. Colorado, 39 percent. Florida, 34 percent. Michigan, 32 percent. Georgia, 33 percent approval. Nevada, 30 percent. That's a there's a huge Senate race there. This guy's got a 30 percent approval rating. North Carolina, 32. Pennsylvania, 33. Virginia. It's not supposed to be. Even a purple state, he's at 38% approval, 55% disapproval. And the same thing in Wisconsin, 38-56 in Wisconsin. Now, if you think that's ugly, let me tell you about CNN Plus. Yes, CNN Plus. Um, now, of course, Stu Plus, that uh, merch is available at stewdoesmerch.com. That's a totally different story. Um, here is a, a graph that has been leaked to Axios. They've been able to get a, a bunch of these proposals uh, somehow. Uh, they've acquired them. And here are the projected number of subscriptions when they launched CNN Plus. This is what they thought was going to happen. And this is from a CNN presentation. They believed in 2024 they would cross 10 million subscriptions. In 2027, they would cross 20 million subscriptions, and they would approach 30 million subscriptions by the year 2030. This, there could not be someone more delusional than CNN Plus. Maybe Taylor Lorenz. I don't know. But you, it's absolutely incredible. And what's really fascinating is they also had um, a, an earnings uh, part of this. The most fascinating part is by 2024, they project to have 12 million subscribers and still lose $200 million. God, what the hell kind of company is this? A complete and utter catastrophe. Although those numbers do look better than our federal budget. A friend of mine put his house on the market the other day, and he got 15 showings within the first day. 15. He's been able to continue these showings at basically this pace since. And he's had, in the first day, I know, had two offers above asking price. One of them by like 15, 20 percent above asking price. This is the market we're in right now, at least in Texas. I don't know if it's like that everywhere in the country, but that's what it's like in Texas right now. And when you have a, a transaction like this, it's probably going to be the most imp important financial tr transaction you've ever made in your entire life. How do you know how to maximize it? You need a real estate agent that you can trust. Somebody who knows the market, somebody who can help you get the most money for the house that you're selling and get the best price for the house that you're buying. Realestateagentsitrust.com is Glenn's company. He's been working uh, on this project for a very long time. It's been very successful because people know uh, that you need, now that you need a good real estate agent and they know where to get them. Realestateagentsitrust.com. Go there now. Check it out. Realestateagentsitrust.com.
Please subscribe to this show. That's right. We like it when you do that. Click subscribe wherever you happen to be on podcast or on YouTube or Facebook or wherever. Mark the show favorite if you can. I know you can do that on Facebook, uh, I think on Instagram as well. So do that. Follow the show. We do appreciate it. Here's some comments. Uh, for this one from YouTube, which you can get every episode live, ready to go on YouTube.com slash Stu Does America. I don't really care how much Musk decides to censor as long as it's applied equally across the spectrum. In my opinion, that was the biggest problem with Twitter. Yes, it's very true. Um, now, we had a comment from uh, Ari Melber yesterday. Uh, he's a guy who came out and was made idiotic comments like, can you believe they could actually change what you see on Twitter if Elon Musk takes over, as if that hasn't been happening constantly to conservatives? Ken Melber Jr. writes, as a Melber, we have officially kicked Ari Melber out of the family. We apologize on behalf of the rest of the Melber clan for Ari's stupidity. <laughs> Apology accepted. Thank you. Uh, can we get some appreciation for the line she sent up smoke signals when referring to both Pocahontas and emissions? Elizabeth Warren, of course. Absolute gold. Thank you very much. Uh, Jillian writes, Stu shows my favorite right up there with Glenn's. And I hope when you say right up there, you mean right above, obviously. And Rosie writes, love the Veep Thoughts segment. Yes, we had a brand new one yesterday. You can watch all of the Veep Thoughts episodes, all of the incredible knowledge and guidance from the one, the only Kamala Harris, all available anytime for you to share to your friends at veepthoughts.com. It's veepthoughts.com. Back in a second. I got to take a minute and go back on these CNN plus numbers for a second. It's, it's remarkable. I don't get shocked by stuff like this that often. But CNN was projecting, a, let's say, 16 million subscribers in 2025. OK, 16 million subscribers. Now, obviously, that's completely insane. There's no way they were ever going to get 16 million subscribers. But even if they did, did by their own projections, this incredibly successful enterprise would get exactly zero dollars in profit in 2025. It would be the first year they broke even. This, I love this story so much, it could not possibly get any dumber than this. But every day there's a new twist. Okay, here's what happened uh, on a, another note here, because this is, this is fantastic. If you think CNN Plus is bad, it is. It's actually worse than this even. But uh, there is a FOIA request that went back uh, to, you know, many, many years now. It was a project that started in 2009. We're just getting uh, the FOIA request results now. What was this $10 million project being worked on at the Pentagon? Well, uh, documents pertaining to the research was re uh, were obtained by Vice through FOIA. Um, it was filed about four years ago. It was about a $10 million project that is a lunar tunnel, a tunnel through the moon. <laughs> Why would you want a tunnel through the moon? Great question. Uh, well, it was supposed to happen with nuclear weapons to drill a hole through the moon to find anti-gravity. Now, you might think to yourself, I can't get anybody to give me any money. Why doesn't anyone give me $10 million? Well, you didn't write a proposal as well thought out as this. Now, it just happens that the center of the moon is a potential well, not too deep, that it cannot be reached by making the tunnel through the moon. Not possible for the deeper potential well of the Earth where the temperature and pressure are too high. Making a tunnel through the moon, provided there is a good supply of negative mass, could revolutionize interstellar space flight. A sequence of thermonuclear shape charges would be required to make such a tunnel technically feasible. So there you go. That's where your $10 million went. A potential study of a moon tunnel yeah, we're doing a good job here in America, aren't we?